This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. California's emissions regulations are some of the tightest in the world. And what does that mean for trucking in the Golden State? This week, we take a look. You're watching CCJ's 1044, a weekly webisode that brings you the latest trucking industry news and updates from the editors of CCJ. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you'll never miss an installment of 1044. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host as always on the other side is Matt Cole. The Environmental Protection Agency in December passed its latest round of emission control regulations targeting the model year 2027. While those regulations tighten tailpipe NOx emission limits to about 80% below the current standard and reduce particulate matter by about 50%, California is poised to take those emissions limits at the state level even lower. Now, if California was a country, it would be the fourth largest economy in the world. And with the largest port operation in the U.S., CalStart President John Bozell says trucking is the lifeblood of that economy. But the trade-off that comes with such a reliance on transportation is the air quality and environmental impact associated with a diesel engine. Concurrently, the trucks... Uh, are also a major source of greenhouse gas emissions that are impacting our climate. And of course, uh, climate change and its impact on California would be significant. Uh, We could lose a lot of the snowpack that feeds our agricultural industry and in many other ways in which sea level rise would hurt the coastal economies uh, up and down the state. So the state also has a separate set of rules urging and and requiring that we transition to lower carbon trucks. So that's why the the state is pushing hard for an ability to to keep its own regulations on the books and be able to push for standards that are tougher than than those at the federal level, realizing that, you know, we need uh, better truck performance, fewer emissions coming out of trucks here than, than they may need and say, Uh, North Dakota or Oklahoma. But in this state, it's a priority. Uh, We really want to make it happen. The regulators here do feel like we've got exceptional circumstances, more truck traffic, more people impacted. So we need a stronger standard than would be practical for for the feds uh, to, to adopt. California has a lot of air quality regulations. For example, as of next year, most newly manufactured small off road engines, like leaf blowers or lawnmowers, have to be zero emission. And there are some aggressive sales targets for electric or fuel cell heavy trucks in 2024 too, considering that some of these solutions barely even exist right now. Starting in in 2024, uh, the OEMs, the manufacturers of trucks, have to start begin selling a a certain percentage. I can't remember, but it's a fairly low percentage of, of all their trucks sold that will have to be zero emission. So that, that means that they're either battery powered or they could be powered by hydrogen and, and fuel cells. Um, and then eventually that number gets up to 30% of all new sales uh, by 2030 would have to be zero emission. And right now we're seeing you know an, an uptake on the, the transit bus market, which is included in commercial vehicles. They're up to about 20 or 25 percent of all new sales are already electric or fuel cell buses. So in certain segments of that overall picture, some really good progress is, is already uh, being made. There's a huge amount of, uh, of trucks that do 200, 250 miles or less per day. That is easily how we get to the, the 30 percent by 2030 market. Uh, mark by targeting that segment of trucks. The concern I hear often from trucking fleets that do business in California and other states is that California's ability to regulate its own emission standards outside of the EPA sets motor carriers up to acquire what we would kind of consider a California spec, so to speak, because an EPA compliant truck may or may not be California compliant. But John says that's only the case under a very specific set of circumstances, and he tells us what those are after a word from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. 
Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. But Dello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. There is a concern right now that um, the, main, the trucks that are bought here in the state of California meet that lower standard, but then most of the trucks that are operating out of state and then come into California are meeting the federal standard, which is weaker, but California doesn't have control over that. So the state doesn't get as much clean air because the federal standard isn't as strong. All these other trucks coming into the state are operating under the federal standard, and then the state doesn't get the clean air as as fast as it would like to get it. I think the the big challenge for the manufacturers is a lot, you know, a, a number of the trucks, somewhere I think in the, in the neighborhood of forty percent, particularly of the bigger trucks, are sold here in the state. So any truck sold here would have to meet the California standard, and then uh, then there is another, say, half the trucks are operating in the state, but they 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 are domiciled elsewhere. So then they only have to meet that that national standard. So. I think yes, the, the the trucks coming in from out of state are able to operate here, but uh, all the trucks sold in the state would have to meet the, that California standard. We also hear from a lot of fleet operators that emission regulations, whether from the EPA or California, are just a means to mandate going electric. But John says it's not about electrification as a solution; it's about zero emissions. As far as which powertrain gets us there, he says it doesn't matter. Although electric clearly has an upper hand. With the two regulations on the greenhouse gases, uh, that is that is what the state sees as the the ultimate solution and where we need to go. And and by electric, what they the standard is really zero emission. So it could be battery electric or it could be fuel cell hydrogen and who, or who knows maybe some new technology. But it's they really are focused on on the output, the, the zero emission, no no tailpipe and, and uh, a decarbonized uh, fuel stream. That is what they're pushing on with the NOx standard. That, that is really based on public health. They are you know wanting the, the trucks, the internal combustion engine trucks that are being sold and operated in the state to be cleaner. They're not using that regulation to try to get people to, to go to zero emission. They're simply trying to get, you know, to make sure that those Diesel trucks that are operating are as as clean as they they can be, and and helping as much as they can to lower the amount of air pollution in the state. When you look at what happened going back to the early nine late nineties, uh, up to two thousand seven and twenty ten, it's amazing what the the EPA did in coordination with CARB, but really at the EPA level to really lower emissions from diesel trucks. I mean, they, we're talking about in the on the order of ninety percent cleaner uh, over that period of time. So, you know, there was pushback, and at times the OEMs were saying it couldn't be done, but they ended up doing it, and and they got to that ninety percent cleaner, and and that's why we have you know almost uh, you know ten more million million people in the state, a thriving economy, but cleaner air. It's not as clean as it needs to be, but it's a lot cleaner. You, you don't do that without advances in technology and, and then also the regulations requiring that they be adopted. So there's really a tremendous success story, despite a lot of opposition along the way. California is home to a lot of battery electric commercial trucks, either in some kind of pilot program, daily operation and drayage and a few handfuls of other segments. But in most of those cases, they're in the hands of really big operations, Pepsi, for example. But the vast majority of trucking companies in the state are smaller outfits without those kinds of resources. Smaller guys are usually buying the, the used trucks, right? They're, they're not buying the trucks up front. 
Um, so that's that's where there is a great role for the Pepsi's, uh, the Walmarts, uh, and others to to be out there leading them being the ones making that investment, buying the trucks, the, the zero emission trucks. And then, you know, then eventually they're going to filter in, into, into the used truck market. I think over the next several years, we're going to find that the truckers are super happy with the, right now, certainly with battery electric technology, they don't, the, the brakes will last two to three times as long. There are no fluids to replace, uh, no filters. Uh, maintenance costs, you know, go way down. I mean, the people who are driving electric cars now are saying, you know, what, what do you replace? Your tires? And and you got to put in new fluid for your to wash your windfield, windshield. That's about it. So if I'm a fleet operator, I'm going, wow, that's, that's a huge saving. And then uh, you look at the cost of electricity uh, versus diesel. Uh, if you if you're able to charge at the right time of day, you, which is usually at nighttime, and, and and a lot of truckers are able to do that, you get a really low cost of electricity, which is probably a third of the the price of diesel. So when you start looking at the total fleet economics, uh, that picture is pretty positive. And and right now too, we have uh, this state of California has incentives. Uh, that that help in that that process to bring down that initial purchase price, and um, I think it's going to be really exciting. And that uh, when when fleets start getting their hands on and and really understand how these trucks perform and the and the savings, the operating cost savings, and the, the that fact that the trucks don't have to spend time at the mechanics, their uptime is better. I think they're going to be really actually be pleasantly surprised. But what's really exciting is that outside of California, many other states have much cheaper electricity than we do in California. It could be half the price of of what we're paying in California. So when I talk to some of the OEMs, they're going, well, you know, the business case for electric trucks is going to be a lot better. And in in some of the other states uh, that where the the electricity is, is much cheaper. So I'm, I'm actually getting quite excited about the economics for electric trucks in in the Midwest and, and even in the Southeast. California has become kind of the butt of the joke when it comes to the electric grid. Here's this state that struggles keeping the lights on when everybody switches on the AC during the summer. But John says the reality is those instances are isolated and rare, and he foresees a role for a trucking industry staple to support state-based infrastructure, the truck stop. I think for for truck stops along some of our major interstates, we're talking to some some developers that are very excited about the ability to to generate their power on site, Uh, that there's space around those truck stops to to put in significant quantities of solar power, be able to use that power, uh, store that power during the day, uh, to be able to charge trucks at nighttime. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and stay up to date on the latest in trucking industry news and trends. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you can catch us again next week.